I'm here to share a war story with you. It happened a long time ago when I first started, about 25 years ago, in fact. And it was an application where we had a sump. And we, there was a building that had acid streams in it. And sometimes the, we would have to drain some acid to the trench to the building. Uh, all those trenches fed into a building sump. And so we would have some acid in the sump. We had a project to add neutralization to that sump. So agitator and three pH probes, so we could do the middle select. Greg McMillan would be very proud of us for that. And then we, we had a split range control for, for being able to add caustic to neutralize the acid in the sump. Sounds like a simple project. We put it in, and for about the first week, it was neutralizing the acid just fine. And, and the, the valve loading was increasing, you know, kind of trending up day after day. And the caustic flow wasn't. And about a week into it, we, we weren't getting enough flow, and we had to shut the neutralization system down. And we took the piping apart, and I was out there with the instrument mechanic. He said, you've got to see this. So there was a big, like, solid mass that was pulled out of the mag meter. And we put it on the ground and then kind of used a rod and you could poke it a little bit and you could see there was some plastic in there. And it was whitish. And then if you poked it a little bit more, you could see that there was, it was white inside the plastic. And when we poked it a little bit more, you could see it was the instruction manual for the mag meter. They come, rolled up inside the mag meter. When they got that, they took it out of the, the, the crate, put it right in and installed it. Instruction manual still all rolled up inside. Couldn't believe it. There's a second part to this story, though. It's from an alarm standpoint. So I, I do a lot of work with alarm management. And it's an interesting thing that we you know, might want to consider when you're doing a project like that, a modification. So we had had the sump. And whenever we had an acid leak, we would know it because we measure pH. And all of a sudden, the pH would go low. And we know we had an acid leak. So we would go out and, and track that back and find that leak and, and repair it. If we didn't repair it quickly, it could grow and, and, and become a, a larger and larger leak of acid. When we put in the neutralization, then the control variable was pH. So it stayed constant. And we started to add more and more caustic when there was a leak. And so the first time that happened, we, were, we probably had the leak, a, a leak for about a week there. And it had gotten so big that we were, we eventually got the low pH alarm and we couldn't add enough caustic to neutralize that leak. So we had to go back and set a high flow alarm on caustic at a very low number. So as soon as we started to add any significant amount of caustic, we knew we had an acid leak. And it wasn't the pH that was the indication of the leak, it was the flow of caustic. 